Hey everyone, my name is Josh and I started day trading futures in February 2022, which makes it almost a year since I started, and what a wild year it's been. I'll be honest, the reason I started day trading in the first place was to make a lot of money, which is still the ultimate goal, but being so profit oriented, especially as a beginner, led to some very irresponsible trading that resulted in large financial losses. More on this later. Over the past few months, I've been laser focused on training myself to be a more responsible trader with the primary goal of not making a lot of money, but rather to achieve consistent profitability. I definitely haven't fully achieved that yet, so I'm not exactly qualified to be giving any real advice, but as you can see from the daily updates in my community tab, I've been making significant progress. Getting to this point took a lot of costly mistakes, and I wanted to share the five biggest lessons I've learned that have personally helped me progress the most towards achieving consistent profitability. Just a disclaimer that not everyone may agree with the lessons and ideas shared in this video, and that's totally okay. At the end of the day, we all have different trading styles, and what works for me may not necessarily work for you. Also, none of these lessons relate to any specific technical strategies. They're more general lessons that cover the non-technical aspects of trading, such as trader psychology and risk management. Before we get into the actual lessons though, I wanted to give a quick overview about my own personal futures day trading journey, as I think it'll frame the lessons a little better. When I first started day trading futures, I traded in a simulation account, also known as paper trading, where I basically traded with fake money. Almost all brokerages will let you trade a sim account for free, and I used this to test different technical trading strategies without any real risk. As many of you probably know, trading a SIM account is deceptively easy. Since there's no real risk, I didn't need to have any risk management rules and never needed to give much thought about trade sizing or setting daily loss limits. It was also very easy to let a trade fully play out. I was never bothered by getting stopped out and was never tempted to take profits early since there wasn't any real money at stake. After resetting the SIM account a few times, I hit a hot win streak using an indicator based strategy and my SIM account began to grow very rapidly. I thought to myself, man, if only I was trading a real account, I would be making so much money right now. I felt confident in my indicator strategy and was eager to start using it to make real profits. So I decided to open a real futures account to do it for real. Again, as many of you probably also know, trading a real futures account is a whole different ball game from trading a SIM account. With real money at stake, I was a lot more emotionally invested in each trade and found that it was a lot harder to let trades fully play out. I would frequently exit trades early to secure small profits and would be afraid of taking losses, so would adjust my stop loss or average down, sometimes both. All this lack of emotional discipline, plus the fact that I had no concept of risk management and proper trade sizing, resulted in frequent bouts of revenge and tilt trading and a very volatile equity curve. I found myself in a cycle of having a streak of small wins followed by a single massive loss that would wipe out all my profits and more. My first futures account ended up getting auto liquidated after the value dropped below the maintenance margin requirement. I blamed this on a combination of bad luck and bad discipline, so I added more funds to the account, this time implementing a daily loss limit. I followed these new rules for a little bit, but sure enough, I inevitably went on tilt and broke my loss limit rules, which ended up getting the account auto liquidated again. This second account blow up made me face the hard truth that I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Having a good technical strategy was completely worthless if I couldn't get my emotions under control, and I had no business trading my own money until I was confident I could do it responsibly. I didn't want to go back to trading a SIM account because it just couldn't accurately emulate the emotional component of trading, which was the primary aspect I needed to train. I learned that there was a middle ground between a free SIM account where you have no emotional investment and a real money account where you're completely financially invested. This sweet spot is a proprietary trading firm's account where you can trade with the prop firm's money and keep most of the profits yourself. And the first tip I wanted to share is to consider trading with a prop firm before trading your own account. Won't go into any specifics here since there are so many prop firms and they all have their own unique rules, but the gist of it is that if you can prove to them that you're a profitable trader, usually this involves hitting a profit target on an evaluation account, they will let you trade with their money on a funded account and let you keep the profits after taking a small cut. The drawback is that evaluations and even funded accounts all have associated fees and have strict rules, usually in the form of trailing liquidation thresholds, that make it very easy to blow up prop firm accounts without proper risk management. Many people even view prop firms as being predatory, which is fair because I'm sure they make a ton of money from account fees paid by aspiring traders blowing up their accounts left and right due to the strict account rules. 
I was definitely a frequent payer of account fees myself at first, but it was from repeatedly failing evaluations that I learned the importance of risk management and the other lessons that will be shared in this video. I think many things in life are all about perspective, and I'm choosing to take the optimistic view that these restrictive prop firm account rules are guidelines that force you to prioritize risk management and set strict rules for yourself to trade as responsibly as possible, as there really is no margin for any tilt trading if you want to withdraw profits from a funded account. In the past year, while trading with Apex Trader funding, I was able to improve my risk management skills and refine my trading strategy to the point where I was even able to take a few withdrawals from funded accounts. This highlights another benefit of trading a prop firm account, which is that while your total financial risk from blowing up an account is limited to the account fees, if you're able to develop your skills to trade profitably, the upside is tremendous and far outweighs the cost. I've spent quite a bit on evaluations and funded account fees from all those blowups this past year, which I really just considered to be the cost of trading tuition but my two withdrawals have more than paid for them. And even if I didn't take any withdrawals, the total I've spent on fees in over seven months of trading with Apex is still significantly less than the amount of money I lost in just three months of trying to trade my own futures account. I don't even wanna think about how much more I would have lost if I had continued to try to trade my own account. But the biggest benefit is still that the prop firm account rules have forced me to work on my self-discipline and follow the strict risk management rules I've set for myself that I think are absolutely necessary to master before even thinking about trading my own money again. Apex currently is allowing for $25,000 of withdrawals per account before any profit splitting. And I've decided that if I'm able to withdraw $25,000 from a single account while following my risk rules, this will be the sign that I've achieved consistent profitability and will be ready to trade my own money again. There are plenty of prop firms out there, so definitely do your own due diligence. But if any of y'all are interested in signing up for your own Apex account, you can use my sign up link and coupon code in the description below for a nice discount. I hope by now it's clear that I would only recommend signing up with a prop firm if you're serious about improving your day trading. There's tremendous upside, but you'll be forced to follow strict risk management rules if you want to be able to withdraw any profits. It's something I wish I had done before trading my own money, as it would have saved me a lot of personal trading losses. So I'm currently still trading on Apex prop firm accounts, and while I do think that most of the following trading tips also apply to real money accounts, wanted to let y'all know that I've been specifically applying them to prop firm accounts. Similar to my own story, I'm sure many traders are also drawn to day trading because of the tremendous profit potential. Most of the popular day trading content here on YouTube are about making huge profits in a short amount of time using simple setups, which give viewers a strong impression that they can use day trading to get rich quick. Well, this is just not the case. I mean, it's certainly possible, but it's possible in the same way that you can also get rich quick gambling at a casino. Another reality about day trading that isn't as widely posted about is that you can also lose a lot of money really quickly. And I noticed that a lot of big trading channels don't have as much content about losses or showing examples where their technical setups fail. I don't blame them though. It obviously feels bad to show losses, especially if their viewers expect them to be profitable traders. Many of them also have courses they're trying to sell, so I totally get why they post more about massive wins. Unfortunately, this does over glamorize day trading and just makes it seem easier than it actually is. From personal experience, I watched so much content about how some indicators and basic technical analysis can lead to huge trading profits that I was a little misled and was overconfident when I first started day trading. If I'm honest with myself, when I was trading my own futures account, I was just trying to make a lot of money really quickly. And in order to do that, I had to enter trades with big contract sizes so I could make big profits. And of course, as more money was at stake, the more emotions and adrenaline I would feel during each trade. When my trades hit my profit targets, I felt such a big rush. And when I went on a win streak, it felt like I was unstoppable. But when my trades got stopped out, I would be super upset and feel a strong urge to win it all back, since all that mattered to me was making big profits. Getting stopped out multiple times in a row would lead to revenge trading, where I didn't care about technical setups anymore and would enter and exit trades purely based on emotions usually leading to massive losses that would ruin my day. Now you might be thinking that this sounds awfully similar to gambling, right? And you'd be absolutely correct. The harsh truth that I had to internalize was that if I was trying to use day trading to get rich quick, I was really just gambling, which we all know can be very lucrative in the short term if we're lucky, but it's guaranteed to be very unprofitable in the long term. It took blowing up my own futures account twice, then blowing up some Apex accounts, all from emotional tilt trading that highly resembled gambling, 
for me to learn that being a consistently profitable day trader is actually hard as hell and takes an incredible amount of self-discipline and psychology training in addition to studying and backtesting technical setups. One of the reasons I'm posting fully transparent daily updates about all my wins and losses in my community tab is to show my viewers that responsible day trading is not a glamorous way to get rich quick as suggested by a lot of the popular trading content but rather it's a steady and methodical plan that relies on strict risk management to minimize your losses and keep your emotions in check. This way, you can fully capitalize on the long-term probability of a technical setup, which brings us to the next lesson, which is to find a setup you like and stick to it for every trade. There certainly is no shortage of technical strategies out there to enter trades with. I'm not gonna even try to suggest which trading strategy is the best because I really think that they all have merit. It could be supply and demand, support and resistance, volume profile, book map, moving average crossovers, other indicator based strategies, the list goes on and on. But all of these strategies try to capitalize on long term patterns that occur in the markets, and thus they all should have a long term edge. What this means is that if you take the same exact setup every single time, you should be profitable when the sample size gets to be large enough. I know this may sound obvious, but many traders, especially newer ones, are so eager to enter trades that they can't stick to just one strategy. I definitely struggled with this myself, and my eagerness to trade resulted from my desire to make profits quickly, as discussed earlier. I figured that if I added more strategies to my arsenal, I could take more trades off different setups and increase the amount of money making opportunities. The main problem with trading different strategies at the same time was that it resulted in overtrading where I was taking so many trades a day that it was impossible to keep track of what was working and what wasn't. I also found myself giving up easily on a particular strategy or indicator if it didn't work out a few times and was kind of aimlessly strategy hopping and finding new indicators without much success or consistency. I finally realized that I needed to narrow my strategy to a single setup and really study and practice it to give it a chance to present its long term edge. I'm currently taking trades using the ICT 2022 model as the entry requirements are fairly objective and its concepts on liquidity and imbalances just make sense to me. I know there are many traders who don't think he's a real deal and that's totally fine. There are so many profitable setups out there, you just need to find one that makes the most sense to you. Once you find that setup, try to set your entry rules to be as objective as possible so it's easy to determine if they're met or not. It's just such a great feeling when I see all my entry requirements met because it's so easy for me to enter the trade without any hesitation or emotions. Even if I get stopped at for a loss, I find that I'm not really upset. In a weird way, it's comforting to know that I had no choice but to take the trade since all my entry requirements were met, and the only way to capitalize on a setup's long-term edge is to take it every single time. If you think about it, it would actually be unprofitable not to take the trade if all the setup requirements were met. What this also means is that taking trades when there's any deviation from your entry rules will hurt the long-term profitability, and this is definitely an area where I still sometimes struggle. I still feel that eagerness to enter a trade when most, not all, my requirements are met, and sometimes give in and take it anyway. Not only do I feel a lot worse when these undisciplined trades result in losses, but they're also skewing the true win percentage of my setup. One big benefit of only trading a single setup is that it becomes a lot easier to collect data. My entry requirements are strict enough where I'll only see my setup a few times a day on average, so it's been a lot easier to log all my trades. I take screenshots and jot down notes to help me review and analyze them to identify the common factors of winning trades, and I can refine my entry requirements if necessary. I'm also keeping track of my win rate to confirm that there is indeed a long-term edge and to maintain confidence in the setup, especially if I ever find myself in a losing streak. This leads me to the next lesson, which is to train yourself to better accept losses. I'm sure we can all agree that losing is never a good feeling. But losing a trade feels especially bad because unless you're trading a sim account, there's also a real financial loss associated with it. Unfortunately, trading losses are inevitable as even the highest probability setups will lose at some point due to the fact that the market has an element of unpredictability. I sincerely believe that how we respond to these losses ultimately determines whether we can be consistently profitable or not. As many of us have experienced, emotional trading without any technical basis also known as revenge or tilt trading, is probably the biggest reason we blow up our accounts, which makes this the primary obstacle preventing us from achieving consistent profitability. 
I've learned from personal experience that every single loss we take has a chance to put us on tilt and cause us to start revenge trading. Whether it be having price barely miss your profit target before reversing and stopping you out, getting stopped out by a random price spike caused by a news release you weren't aware of, being stuck in a losing streak, or it could even be non-trading related distractions going on in your life. We all have different triggers that make us lose control, break our rules, and succumb to emotional tilt trading. The common thread between all our tilt-inducing scenarios is that they involve taking losses, and I believe that the core of the problem is that we're just terrible at accepting losses. Here are some general tips that I've applied to my own trading that have helped me better accept my trading losses and thus have drastically minimized the chance of going on tilt. First, I now mentally prepare myself for a potential stop out before I even enter the trade, no matter how confident I am. This is in line with a very common adage to hope for the best and prepare for the worst, which absolutely applies to trading. Before I click that button to submit my entry order, I remind myself that getting stopped out is a very real possibility and I need to be okay if that happens. This mental preparation is so important because if it actually does happen, I won't be as surprised and it'll be easier to accept. I used to find myself frequently adjusting my profit targets and stop loss levels mid-trade, not because it was part of my trading strategy, but because I was afraid that my original stop loss would get hit. This is a very clear sign that I didn't fully accept the maximum risk of the trade before I entered, and it was time to size down. Which leads to tip number two. The smaller the loss, the less upsetting it is. This sounds obvious, right? If taking big losses is so upsetting to us and puts us on tilt, why are we so reluctant to decrease the size of our trades? If we're honest, it's because we're greedy. As mentioned previously, all the trading content we consume about making huge gains have distorted our perception of day trading that we can use it to get rich quick, and we can't get rich quick if we decrease the size of our trades too much. How we resolve this conflict comes back to the question of whether we just want to have some fun gambling with a slight edge using technical strategies, in which case we can continue to use big size. Or, if we're serious about being consistently profitable traders, we need to consider lowering the maximum risk of each trade to the point where we can be okay with the loss. This threshold is different for everyone, so it may take a few tries to find what your ideal trade size is, but just know that sizing down is worth it in the long run if it can prevent you from going on tilt and blowing up your account. Lastly, losses are easier to accept if you only take trades based on your exact setup that's backed by win rate data. Going back to the previous point, I highly recommend logging all your trades so that you have enough data to prove that your setup has a profitable long-term win rate. This way, if you take a trade that fits your exact setup and it results in a loss, it's much easier to be reassured in the long-term probability of your setup and view the loss as just a short-term exception. Note that your reward to risk ratio also plays a role in trusting your setup's win rate. For example, if your reward to risk ratio is generally 2 to 1, you only need your win rate to be above 33% to be long-term profitable. At the end of the day, profitable trading is really just capitalizing on long-term probabilities as anything can happen in the short term. The more data you have and the less you deviate from your setup, the less bothered you'll be by your losses. Side note, if you're seeing that your win percentage and reward to risk ratio is actually not looking to be long term profitable after collecting a large enough sample size, it might be time to consider switching technical strategies, but that's advice for another time. So I saved the most important lesson for last, and this one is kind of a culmination of all the previous lessons. In my opinion, the biggest difference between serious traders and the gamblers is that the serious traders follow risk management rules that prioritize capital preservation. As a trader, your most important asset is your capital, as you literally cannot trade without it. So it's absolutely crucial that you protect it at all costs. Each time you go on tilt and blow up an account, you essentially light your capital on fire. So these risk management rules should be specifically tailored to prevent you from going on tilt while still allowing the account to grow at a steady pace. Here are two examples of my own risk management rules that meet this criteria. First, set a max risk per trade that allows for a losing streak without blowing your account. I'm sure most people who have been trading for long enough can attest that you will eventually hit an extended downswing at some point, and you don't want a streak of bad luck or a few instances of breaking your rules to blow up your account. Everyone's risk tolerance is different, but I currently set my max risk per trade so that I'd have to lose 10 trades in a row for my account to get auto liquidated, which comes out to be $250 per trade. If my setup requires a large stop loss and trading minis would make the stop loss risk above 
I'll size down to micros. Yes, trading with smaller size also means smaller profits. But remember that trading to get rich quick is a gambler's mindset. Also, as mentioned earlier, losing smaller size trades will be less likely to set you on that dark path towards tilt trading, which is the main thing we're trying to prevent with our rules. Next, set some sort of daily trade limit, whether it be a limit to the amount of trades you take or some form of a profit target or loss limit. Every trader has their own preferred type of limit, but we need to set boundaries for ourselves to prevent trading from getting out of hand. Trading is also pretty mentally taxing, and I found that I become less focused the more trades I take. Remember that every loss we take has a chance of putting us on tilt, so the less we trade, the less likely that can happen, which again is the main thing we're trying to prevent with these rules. I currently have a maximum daily trade limit of two losses where I have to immediately stop trading after taking my second loss of the day, but if I keep winning, I can keep trading. I set my loss limit at two because when combined with my max risk per trade of $250, this would put my maximum daily loss at $500 if I lose my first two trades of the day. And this is about the most financial loss I can stomach without it ruining my day. This rule has also helped normalize losses because I'm frequently ending the trading day on a loss. And the more losses I take, the less they bother me. Since there isn't a limit on my wins, my rules will still allow for win streaks if I happen to hit any. Now it can take some time to refine your risk management rules to fit your personality and trading style. But once you've established them, you must stick to them no matter what. From my own personal experience, breaking your rules can be a slippery slope, especially if you get away with it. For example, I will admit that on one of my previous funded accounts, there have been times when I broke my loss limit rule to revenge trade a little, and I was actually able to win it all back. This subconsciously put in my head that it was okay to break my rules once in a while, because it all worked out these few times. Later on, when I got another urge to revenge trade after hitting my loss limit, I figured it worked the last few times, so I just went for it again. Except this time it didn't work out, and I took another loss, which put me on tilt, so I started a tilt trading spree, and sure enough, the account eventually got blown. Moral of the story is that breaking your rules even a single time is very dangerous as it will most likely lead to you breaking your rules many more times down the road, which will inevitably lead to the one thing that the risk rules were supposed to prevent, blowing up your account from tilt trading. After struggling to follow my rules for a bit, I did happen to come across two hacks that have greatly helped me get better at following my rules that I wanted to share with y'all. I guess this is a little bonus lesson. The first is that whenever Apex has massive sales, which happen pretty frequently, I will always take advantage of the sale and buy a few evaluation accounts to keep on deck. If I happen to hit my daily loss limit on my primary account and feel a strong urge to take a revenge trade that I feel so strongly will work out, I'll pull out one of these fresh evaluation accounts and will take the irresponsible revenge trade on it. If it ends up winning, I'm happy that my lucky winning revenge trade didn't go to waste. And if it doesn't work out, I'd be grateful that it was just on a new evaluation account and it didn't mess up my primary account that I've put so much time and effort into. Either way, it would satisfy that revenge trading urge without any serious consequences. Since these punching bag evaluation accounts were so heavily discounted, it wouldn't really bother me if they got blown up. The second hack that has probably helped me follow my rules the most is getting into the habit of posting fully transparent daily updates in my YouTube channel's community tab for accountability. I'll be honest that before I started posting daily updates in the community tab and was only posting trade recap videos every few days, it was very easy to hide things. There'd be some days where I'd break my rules, go on tilt, get lucky and revenge trade it back, and just not post about it. There was even an instance once where I tilt traded and blew up the evaluation account I was trading on YouTube, and I just bought a new one and traded it to around where the blown account was at in the most recent video and I started trading the new account on YouTube, completely hiding the fact that it blew up the original one. I'll be honest, I did all of this because I used to care more about being perceived as a profitable trader here on YouTube, when in fact, I really wasn't, and still am not. I realized that not only was I being dishonest to my viewers and contributing to the problem of curated trading content, but I was also just doing a huge disservice to myself, as not being able to face my own failures was preventing me from becoming a better trader. So a few months ago, I made the decision to completely rebrand the channel to fully document all my trading losses and wins and risk management failures and successes with 100% transparency. 
I even just shared about my punching bag evaluation accounts, so even that's out of the bag now. I'm posting daily updates in my community tab with all my account data, balances, profit and loss amounts, commissions, everything. So there's really no way to hide anything anymore. This way, I'm being the change I want to see on YouTube by posting authentic day trading content that shows how difficult it is to be a consistently profitable day trader. And I'm also using YouTube for my own accountability to force myself to stick to my risk management rules or else it'll be blasted on YouTube for all to see. You don't know how many times the thought of making an embarrassing post about breaking my rules again helped me resist the urge to tilt trade, which really speaks to the power of accountability. So I want to firstly apologize for not being fully transparent in some of my older content, and also really want to thank all of y'all for your support and for keeping me accountable. I'm actually planning to do a day trading live stream sometime, which is as transparent as it gets, as I'll be executing trades in real time in front of everyone. All right, this is by far the most time and effort I've spent on any video. And if you made it this far, I appreciate you so much for watching it all. Sorry for ranting a bit, but I hope you all have found at least some of this video to be valuable. If so, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I post daily account updates in the community tab, post trade recap videos periodically, and soon we'll try out live streaming, so you definitely won't want to miss that. Since starting this YouTube channel and documenting all the ups and downs of my journey to becoming a consistently profitable day trader, not only have I learned many tough trading lessons as shared in this video, but I've also discovered that I truly have a passion for day trading. The technical setups, probabilities, risk management, trader psychology, it's all just so interesting to me. And the fact that I can make a living doing this if I can achieve consistent profitability motivates me to work as hard as I can to get there. I can't wait to continue this difficult journey and learn even more tough trading lessons this year. And don't worry, I'll be bringing you all along for the ride.